When everybody's arguing, Dan likes to walk outside and play with his turtles with his sister. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Hey turtle nerds, welcome back to another video. In today's video, uh, son, I have no idea what we're doing. It is 92 degrees out, I'm dying. And uh, let's take a look at the pond right quick. We're, we're getting straight into things today. This pond has been filling for 20 minutes. And take a look, it's practically friggin' empty. It was so far empty, it was like I can't even begin to express how much water I'm losing. That brick was exposed, that one right there. That brick was literally exposed. We remember that I just filled this up the other day. Guys, I, it, this is insane. This is insane. So starting tonight, I'm going to do another rest test. And uh, I, so here's my thought process. As we mentioned before, the rest test is basically when you test whether your water level is dropping when all plumbing is shut off. What this does is allows you to basically, voice crack, am I 14? What it does is it allows you to tell if you're losing water without anything running, which means that you have a hole in the liner somewhere. We've done this before and I did not have a hole in the liner. Then we are going to shut off the skimmer and we're gonna put a pump in the water that just goes into the bog. So that way we're bypassing all of the pipe and the skimmer. When we bypass the pipe and the skimmer, that will tell me if the water level does not go down, my problem is in the pipe or the skimmer, which it shouldn't be in the skimmer because the skimmer should go down with the rest test. But anyway, Carter, okay. So you're gonna have questions that like I won't think of because I am like used to um, the pond and like I'm used to like just problem solving. So you're gonna basically be a focus group of frequently asked questions. So I said that there's a leak. What are your questions? Uh, where does the water go? The ground, it goes in the ground. The water goes into the ground. That's how it leaves like the system. Oh Lordy, oh he coming, he coming. Okay, so also guys remember how I have this leftover wire here check out what I did to my fence So this is the only space where dragon fruit who has yet to lay eggs could potentially get out So I wanted to make sure that we secure this hi Louie. Hi, baby this is my baby. This is my old man, Louie. I never really formally introduced him. He's my pup. I've had him for 12 years. He's half schnauzer, half poodle. He's a schnoodle. And he happens to be the cutest dog on the entire friggin' planet and the best little baby nugget. So back to this fencing. Essentially what I did was I zip tied um, the, the scrap piece to the fence. That way dragon fruit and no turtles can really get under. And so I've considered doing this all the way around my entire fence. And we'll see, I still might do that. For right now though, that, that plan is, uh, I don't know, taking a back seat. I still might do it though, because it actually, come on, that doesn't look bad. And our lily pad over here bloomed, but we're towards the end of the day, so it has uh, sort of gone away. Come here. Now this is the spotless ornate that was injured. You guys remember? Look at that. Look at how well that's healing up. So it's kind of interesting. We're going to let this little one go back into the mini pond. And the mini pond's not running just because I'm testing more theories about where my potential leak is, although I'm doubtful that it's here. Hi, Coco. I am so surprised. If you guys question the learning potential of terrapins, it is very, very high because as you can see, most of the turtles have learned that if they take this little path, it takes them right back into the pond. That is incredible. So we're gonna take our driftwood now and I guess I'll, I'll give you guys some pointers on keeping driftwood. So in order to make uh, driftwood safe for our setup, I got this at the beach and so it has been blasted by sand, by wind, by a whole bunch of other stuff. But usually the, the steps that I go to to make driftwood safe for an aquarium, first off, you're gonna want a hardwood. So this clearly came from something that was hardwood and all the bark stripped away. Once all the bark is stripped away, you're left with a nice piece of wood to make it safe for the turtles i usually just let it bake in the sun and then rinse it off a bunch and then that's kind of it some people say you have to bake it at 4,000 degrees for 82 hours like i think that's excessive i mean yes that's the safer option but when am i ever known to take the safer option and not cross contaminate and not be the worst i've never had issues with that um but usually letting it bake in the sun is like my number one thing and then just uh rinsing it to get stuff off of it and debris off of it especially if you're going to keep it outside like it will naturally naturally just decompose and, and usually be okay. So what I kind of want to do is this two pieces of driftwood on the hide of the turtles and I kind of want to take them and put them in the mini pond and replace it with this. It's fearless. All right, so we're gonna reach in, try to remove the driftwood that's already there. I might fall in. We're gonna try to replace it with this thing. If I'm as genius as I think I am, we're gonna be fine. Oh, that, that feels good. Oh, I want to go swimming. Okay, so this, gonna go in the mini pond. Ah! 
I'm willing to take that casualty. Hey buddy, you okay? You died there, you overheated and died. I told you guys, it's 92 degrees out, I was not kidding. So let's check out, uh, I was able to maneuver and get the driftwood in place. I like. What, Mochi, what are you doing up here? Mochi, what? Look, look at this thing. Look at this, come on, this is cool. I really would love to get some plants or something growing on it and I still might turn it a little more towards me, but for right now, this is pretty much the, the best that I've got, the best that I can deal with. Yeah, but I really like it. It gives the terrapin somewhere to interact with. I saw some of the, uh, I think it was Sassy Boy was going up underneath of it and Mac was checking it out, some of the ornate terrapins. I'm overall just, I'm, I'm really happy with this. I'm really, really happy with this. As this thing takes on more water, it will begin to get heavy heavier and then it will weigh itself down which is good right now i wouldn't be surprised if the turtles knocked it into the water tomorrow or overnight at some point yeah so all is well in the pond i just got to figure out where i'm losing water at yo shall we also go check on how the babies are doing the little 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 babies and whether or not they've eaten i see one right now you guys see them i'm gonna kick on the light and hopefully they don't get spooked as i get closer though they're definitely gonna dip into the water. Okay, here I come. There's two little babies there, actually. Hello, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh no, oh no. Well, there goes, I think that's the concentric. Yep, there is that one, and the others are flipping out, and unfortunately, they did not eat their blood worms. So I'm probably gonna get a turkey baster, or maybe I'll just use a cup and try to scoop it all out, if I can, as best as I possibly can. Let's see if we can pull out these blood worms with just a cup, shall we? Oh, uh, that did not work well, and I spooked one of the terrapins. Okay, nuts. You know what, we'll just dump that water in here and let all these guys eat the, not even the blood worms, the fish will eat the blood worms. Yeah, let's just knock it into there. We're not gonna feed these guys today. Actually, you know what? I have an idea. Lettuce. Let us go get some frozen foods and feed it to everyone because I haven't given them anything in a while frozen. I totally just forgot to film the little sequence of popping the cubes into this cup, but it would have went something like this. And it would have been cool because it all would have like sounded together and like in quick rapid succession, but I, I forgot to hit record. I think we're gonna give a brine shrimp cube to these terrapins just because they will absolutely destroy that thing. Um, and also I want to give it to the fish in here. I want them to be careful with one another though. I don't want them. Oh my goodness, this is, okay. Okay, we're gonna give them the other brine shrimp cube then as well. Wow, this, uh... Oh my goodness, I forgot how aggressive of feeders they are. Okay, also the fish need to eat those brine shrimp as well. All right, then we'll pop them another brine shrimp cube, I suppose. I don't know. These guys are crazy. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Chill, y'all. Uh, this is why I feed separately. I don't like this because it, it yeah, it scares me that they're gonna bite one another. Okay, well, that was the end of that. Wow, wow, these guys are crazy feeders. Wow, that was insane. Okay, let's give one of the blood worm cubes to little pumpkin, who should be able to eat an entire one all on his own. Should be. Oh, pumpkin, you'll learn to eat that. Don't worry, buddy. And we, of course, have not fixed his basking platform yet because I am so lazy and it really, like, it, it doesn't really matter. Oh, there he goes, he's gonna learn. Also, I'm really annoyed, guys. Check out these blood worm cubes. Look, half of the cube is water. Can you see that? They don't give you the full blood worm anymore. That my cubes used to be full. Oh, also, you should probably pay attention to pumpkin actually eating. I should probably film that. There you go, buddy. Nom nom nom. Good little pumpkin. Here, we're gonna take this away from the filter, put it right up over here. Let him figure that out. Come on, buddy, spaghetti. There you go. And watch, all the fish are gonna probably come around and start eating it as well. Oh, did you flip yourself over? What happened? Hey, poor little nugget. Let's give these guys um, probably a blood worm cube as well. By the way, part of the fun of having sand in the aquarium, this is how I used to do it way back when I was younger, when I'd have my turtles in an aquarium with sand. The blood worms I would feed fairly often would fall to the bottom like this, and then the terrapins and the turtles would just sort of like forage and pick them off because it was easy for them to find and eat because the worms would stick out kind of like a sore thumb. So I think for these little babies, we're going to take some of the blood worms and actually they could probably eat a full cube. These cubes are not that big. All right, little ones, here we go. Let's see if they eat that. They should. 
Definitely. Yep, and here goes a little butter taking the first bites out of the bloodworm cube and trying to run away with it because butter is greedy. She's a greedy little spotted turtle. Look, she's also starting to get some new spots that are coming through on her shell. As they grow, they're gonna get more and more spots on them. So hopefully Peanut will pick up on the fact that, hey, there's some food here. These cubes are tiny and these bloodworms were kind of expensive. This is kind of insane. Look, so there you go. There you, hey, 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 you need to share. Hey, baby, you gotta share. You need to share your blood worms. Come back, Peanut. Yeah, I guess maybe one cube is, is actually too little. Butter looked literally so offended that I just did that to her. I'm sorry, you need to share, friend. So Butter is eating the main cube at the surface and Peanut is underneath everything. Look, 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 Peanut is underneath. It's starting to get all the scraps, but oh, quickly going to find the source. I think I should toss these guys another cube, I think. They really took that down quickly. For such a little Little turtles, I'm telling you, these guys eat an insane amount. There you go, babies. They also really, really like bloodworms. Bloodworms are really good eating. Bloodworms are, like I mentioned, one of the things that we use to get the original babies eating. It's what I get fresh hatchlings eating usually off the start, and it helps them grow super quickly and super well. Look at them go. They are tearing that thing down. So we're gonna let them finish that up. I do not like the aggression that I've created amongst these terrapins, so for the second time this week, shockingly, I'm gonna feed them in the enclosure. However, tomorrow we're gonna do a nice fat, fat water change on this setup because we can see the water is just starting to get a little bit discolored from feeding in the enclosure. That's actually a lot of food. They are gonna tear it down fairly quickly, but the more hungry they are, the less likely they are to like chew and make a mess of their food. If they're really super hungry, they will just tear these pellets apart, which is what they're doing now. Well, they won't tear them apart. They'll just swallow them whole, which is as we can see what they are doing. If the problem comes when they're full and they're just kind of half picking at the pellets and like not too hungry, but just just sort of half doing it, that they start to make a mess. But all this food will be gone in minutes. Watch this. You see, I told you guys. And they actually didn't really make as big of a mess as I figured they would. So tomorrow we will do a nice fat water change on this bad boy. The two little spotted turtles, peanut and butter are totally full. Butternut is just still sitting there being butternut, of course, doing nothing, which I love him for. And the babies are still being absolutely precious little babies. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something and I'll see y'all in the next one.